China's recorded history extends back to 6000 BCE. During its first thousand years, encompassing the Neolithic era, the Bronze Age, and the Qing and Han dynasties, the unifying characteristic of Chinese art is a mythocentric quality, or a focus on a supernatural and mystical content. A prime example of this period is the Han Dynasty Painted Banner, a colored silk from 160 BC which was found in a noble woman's burial chamber. Instead of having a focus on humans and the natural world, this piece is abound with animals, symbols, and is preoccupied with depicting the mystical separation of heaven, earth, and the underworld. There is no naturalistic setting or subject here. The purpose of this piece is instead to emphasize the deep spiritualism of the era's culture. Buddhism reached its height during the Tang, as evidenced in the Western Paradise of Amitabha Buddha. Amitabha Buddha is painted seated in the center, surrounded by four bodhisattvas who serve as his messengers to the world. In the background, great halls and towers rise while musicians and dancers create a heavenly atmosphere in the foreground. More importantly, this depiction, with its great attention to naturalism, gives our best visualization of the Tang civilization at the time. Following the successful Tang Dynasty was the Song Dynasty. Neo-Confucianism, a fusion of Taoism's focus on peaceful nature, Buddhism's concept of enlightenment, and Confucianism's tr traditional rigor permeated the mindset of Song artists. They found their spiritual goals satisfied in painting nature landscapes, an example of which is Fan Quan's early 11th century scroll, Travelers Among Mountains and Streams. The vastness and eternal essence of nature, and the insignificance of human existence, as demonstrated by the towering thrust of the background, are clearly inspired by Neo-Confucianism. A new realism and attention to detail is also notable. Unlike later European artists who attempted to record a view from a single fixed vantage point, the goal here is to avoid such limits and show a totality beyond what we are normally given to see. Throughout Chinese history, art had been mostly influenced by the imperial court. However, painters were gradually established as more prominent members of society. These artists were considered to be members of the literati, a group of culturally elite intellectuals interested in calligraphy, philosophy, and poetry. The literati eventually elevated painting as a personal expression and created for themselves a status totally separate from the professional painters of that time. By the time of the Yuan dynasty, the literati developed an artistic style that allowed them to express themselves in personal and symbolic terms. A work that demonstrates elements characteristic of the Yuan Dynasty style is the Rongxi Studio. The painting was made by Ni Zan, a member of the literati. The painting shows the use of the dry brush technique, in which the brush is almost out of ink, allowing the white paper to breathe through the ragged strokes. The minimal detail in the dry brush technique gave the Rongxi Studio a sense of lightness and simplicity. Most noteworthy of the Ming ceramics were the blue and white wares, which were made in imperial kilns. Its subtle shape and the refined yet vigorous decoration of the dragons embody the achievements of the Ming artisans. The Forbidden City is the most important Chinese architectural monument still standing. This imperial palace compound was built during the Ming Dynasty. The balance and symmetry of the Forbidden City reflects ancient Chinese beliefs about the harmony of the universe and it emphasizes the emperor's role as the son of heaven, whose duty was to maintain the cosmic order from his throne in the middle of the world. Literati taste also manifested itself in architecture, furniture, and gardens. This garden personifies ideal Ming architecture. It is dotted with pavilions, kiosks, libraries, and studios, many with poetic names such as the Rain Listening Pavilion. Dong Qicheng, a high government official during the Ming Dynasty, embodied the spirit of the literati movement in his practice of calligraphy, poetry, and painting. His work strove not to portray the world as it really appears, but instead focused on its expressive power. Painting was likened to calligraphy, the highest art form in China, and the emphasis was placed on the strokes that compose the shapes rather than the overall appearance of the work itself, thus creating an ambiguous sense of space and distance. During the 17th century, Manchu armies overtook Beijing, resulting in the beginning of the Qing Dynasty. They did not, however, strive to extinguish Chinese traditions. Instead, they adopted and celebrated Chinese customs. In this work, the artist strives to emulate traditional landscapes, incorporating familiar subject matters such as mountains, temples, and bridges. During the first decade after the Qing takeover of the Ming, violence spread throughout China. Those loyal to the Ming committed suicide, hid within monasteries, or fled into the countryside. This work embodies the individualistic energy of this period. The artist paints in a style that borders on abstraction, portraying the hills in a tumultuous, violent composition, reflecting the upheaval within China. In the 19th and 20th centuries, new Western and Japanese ideas seeped into Chinese culture. 
Many artists sought education in Western art forms and sought the synthesis of these techniques with traditional Chinese conventions. During the mid-20th century, China was reformed into a communist state. During this time, the arts became a tool of the government and original expression was repressed. Towards the end of the century, cultural restrictions relaxed and artists began pursuing their own path. This work, the artist borrows the techniques of Western abstract expressionism. He first sketches a landscape, then upon returning to his studio, paints the free expression of his sketch. Currently, the Chinese are seeking a manner of expression that blends the traditions of their ancient civilization while still allowing in Western thought and modern conventions. In this work, the artist captures the peak of the Diamond Mountains on Korea's eastern shoreline. The highly individual brushwork and delicate ink wash set this work apart from Chinese landscapes. This work exhibits the social attitudes of the Silhok movement. Aristocratic men are shown in traditional garb with white beards and wide brimmed hats. They are surrounded by female entertainers in short jackets and generous skirts. Korean modern art was influenced indirectly by Western styles, as well as Japanese and Chinese styles. The work shown here was done by Jim Huang Yi, a modern painter from Korea. It shows a large pair of radiating circular patterns composed of small dots and squares in tones of blue, black, and gray. The influence from multiple styles of art is evident in the appearance of a Western style.